Hey everyone, welcome back to The Rustic Wife. I'm Alana. So it is an exciting day. It is video number two for me for the 2023 Canuary Collaboration, hosted by Lisa from Sutton's Days and sponsored by Four Jars. So I've already done my first video, which was Marmalade, and I'll leave a link to that. But there have been so many videos this month. We're halfway through and we have many more coming up. It has been and will be a fabulous month of January for canning enthusiasts. So for my first video, I had not received my four jars lids yet, so I couldn't use those. But for this one, I will be using the, the lids sent to me by four jars. And I thank you very much to the four jars canning company. Um, they were very, very generous with the lids and rings and tea towels that they sent. That was very much appreciated. Oh, my dogs are howling. There are several things that make this Canuary collaboration exciting. And the first one would be that you get to meet a whole bunch of YouTube channels that you never knew were out there. Um, as YouTubers, we get to see all the lovely comments that people, people leave us and it is very much appreciated. Um, another thing is you get 30 days of canning videos and recipes and tips and tricks. So that's a great learning tool. Um, and the other thing is the prizes. Now, Lisa, who has started this collaboration and she's been doing it for a few years now, she always donates a 23 quart Presto pressure canner. And that's fabulous. If you live outside of the United States, she offers a hundred dollar Amazon card to put toward one of your own. So that's excellent too. And this year, Four Jars has offered some more prizes. So the prizes that they've offered, the first prize is a 21 quart all American canner with 200 lids. That's fabulous because if you can remember last year, uh, lids were really scarce. So that's the first prize. The second prize is a gift basket with a hundred dollar visa card. The third prize is a gift basket with a $50 gift card. Now I want to tell you how you can put your name in to the draw for one of these prizes. And that is to watch all these videos and make a comment on each video because you, every time you put a comment in, your name is put into the draw. So on January 31st at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Lisa will go live and she will put the dates for each video in a hat and draw those out and then use a random comment picker to choose the winner for each one of those prizes. So definitely watch those, those videos, not only for the prizes, but to get all the information, the recipes that all of these YouTubers have put out. And good luck and enjoy these videos. So all the tools and equipment that I'm going to be using to make this mango chutney, I have it laid out. So I have my hot water bath canner right here. I have it filled to about there. So you can see at the bottom of my canner, um, that nasty looking metal thing, that's actually a rack from my pressure canner. So that is the rack that goes on the bottom of my pressure canner. And I actually use it for my hot water bath canner. The metal is poor quality because it's kind of discolored there. But anyway, that's beside the point. But you can see there's little legs right there that holds the jars up off the bottom of the canner. And if you don't want to use a canning rack, like the one pictured right there, then you can just use anything like a rack like I've used, or if you've got a round rack that goes into a roasting pan, you can use that. Or sometimes people will just put a tea towel down, anything to keep their jars up off the bottom of the hot pot. And because if you don't, that could also run the risk of um, making them crack. We are using half pint jars today. We have a family of three, so um, I like to put things like chutneys and relishes in smaller jars. And I have seven half pint jars in here. The recipe calls for six, but I always like to have a, another one on hand just in case because when you're filling your jars at the very last minute, nothing worse than having to wash and sterilize another jar while you're trying to fill it. So um, again, I've got the water filled to about here. And once we have all the jars filled with the mango chutney and we're ready to process, we do want the water to be at least an inch or two inches above the lids. Also, if you have hard water, um, I, you can add a tablespoon of vinegar to your water and that will help with any um, residue or like sediment that may be on your jars after processing. My jars have already been sterilized but I'm just keeping them in the warm water here 
to just to keep them warm until I'm ready to fill. I have my stock pot here. I have my jar lids all laid out and I have the inserts there in hot water just staying warm until I'm ready to use them. Now the instructions with the lids, it, it said to boil the inserts and soften that gasket. Now a lot of um, jar lid companies will tell you that you no longer need to boil the lids anymore, but I'm just following the directions that came in the box from four jars. You also need a tea towel to put on your counter because when your jars come out of the hot water bath can or after processing, they are very hot and if you put them on a cold counter, they may crack. Um, so that's what the tea towel is for. I also have my canning funnel and my jar lifter. I have a wooden spoon for stirring, a ladle to ladle the chutney into the jars, and I also have a chopstick. I use this to get in between the rim of the jar and the chutney and that will eliminate any um, air pockets if there are any. So you can also use a non-metallic, maybe a plastic knife or any, or something like that. Just something that's not metallic because you don't want to chip your jars with anything metal. And I also have a clean cloth that I will be using to wipe the rims of the jar. If anything gets spilled on the rim and then you put the lid on it, it could hinder the seal. So you want to clean the rims off before you add the lids. You can use paper towel as well too. Now the ingredients that you're going to need is of course mangoes and you can use fresh mangoes if you want. If you are going to use fresh mangoes, you need four cups. So um, the recipe said about four or five fresh ones, or you can use frozen mangoes. And I found these ones cheaper. These worked out to be two for three dollars. So that was like, what, seven fifty. dollars Now this bag of frozen mango, there should be four cups of frozen fruit in there, which is what the recipe calls for. And it was $3.99. You can use either for this recipe. Other ingredients that you're going to need is some citrus. Now it calls for a half a cup of chopped orange and half a cup of chopped lemon, or excuse me, lime. I don't know if I probably won't have enough lime, so I'm just going to mix and match some citrus. It also calls for a quarter cup of lemon, so we'll see what we get from that. Fresh ginger, um, fresh garlic, an onion, dark brown sugar, light brown will be fine, um, apple cider vinegar, and some spices. I have um, mustard seed. I also have some hot pepper flakes and I've got some cloves and I'm putting in some garam masala and some curry powder. So that's the addition that I want. The recipe also called for golden raisins. I don't love golden raisins or any raisins in my chutney but you can definitely add those or um, dried cherries or dried cranberries would probably be good too but I'm not going to put any of that in there. Um, the recipe also calls for um, some molasses. So I'm going to wait to the end just to decide whether I want to put molasses in it or not. So I may add a quarter cup of molasses at the end. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, mince the garlic and chop the onion and the citrus fruit. And since I'm going to be using the frozen mango, um, I don't need to chop that, so that's good. If you are going to be using the fresh mango, you need to peel, obviously, and chop it and take out the seed. <laughs> no one got time for mango seed in their chutney. So anyway, um, I'll get that done and then we'll just kind of just toss it in the pot and it's really very quick from there on. Now the recipe calls for that mixed citrus that I'd mentioned, lemons, limes, and oranges, and it calls for about three quarters of a cup of fruit. Now because I do not like pith and the um, membrane of, of fruit in my chutney or if you watch my marmalade video I mentioned how I don't like the pith or the membrane so this is how I cut my fruit to remove the sections without the membrane. After I peel the fruit I actually remove this these segments of orange from between the membranes so you can see where the membranes are right there, and you want to cut the fruit sections in between those. And then you're left with just this, with none of that membrane or some of the pith from the outside. See that white right there? That's pith and that's actually kind of bitter. But if you don't mind it, you'll use less citrus and less labor to get your fruit out. 
think I used two really shriveled limes that were in there, so they, they weren't really full of fruit. I used a shriveled lemon and one that wasn't too bad and two oranges. And cutting my fruit like this, I so far have gotten almost a cup. So you've got all this fruit here, and then you're just left with the membrane that was in between the sections of fruit. So I will squeeze the juice out of this and add it to my fruit and then put it in the compost pile. So I have all the fruit and the vegetables prepared and chopped. I have four cups of this frozen fruit and that package was um, four cups, which is what the recipe requires. And these chunks are fairly big. I'm not gonna bother to cut them up a little bit more um, and I'm not gonna thaw the fruit. So once it cooks down a bit, I can mash it up if I like, if I don't like the size of the chunks. So that's four cups of mango, frozen mango, fresh or frozen. And I have one cup of chopped onion and I just chopped it like, I just chopped it like that. Again, however big you wanna chop your vegetables is fine. It just depends on your taste. And then there's my prepared fruit and that is pretty much a cup of the citrus and a third of a cup of, I grated the fresh ginger. So I peeled it and then grated it on the cheese grater. And that's about a third of a cup. The recipe calls for a half a cup, but I just wanted a third. And I minced four cloves of garlic, one cup of apple cider vinegar. You can use white vinegar too if you want. One tablespoon of mustard seed one teaspoon of hot pepper flakes, a quarter teaspoon of cloves, a quarter teaspoon of garam masala, and a half a teaspoon of curry powder. I have the stove top set to about number four. I'm gonna stir all this together and then just let it simmer. And I'm gonna put the lid on it until it comes to a boil and then I'll turn it down. This has been on the element at number four for about five or six minutes, it's come to a boil, so I wanna remove the lid. Give it a stir. I wanted this fruit to soften, so I'm just gonna give it a stir. And the chunks are quite large, so I can always use my potato masher to mash some of them up and get it to the consistency that I want. And then we're just gonna let this simmer. I've turned the stovetop element down to just in between simmer and number one, really. If you like really large chunks, you don't have to do this step. So you can see the consistency of it there. There are some bigger chunks, which is okay. And I'm just gonna let this simmer away, stirring periodically so that the bottom doesn't scorch until the it reaches the consistency that I like. So this looks like it's been thickening nicely and I also have been stirring it occasionally, well, a little bit more than occasionally because you don't want the bottom to burn. So I'm gonna get the um, jars out of the canner. They've been keeping warm there. So because I did not add the raisins or the half a cup of molasses that it called for, I don't think it's gonna make six half pints. I think it's probably gonna make about four, four and a half maybe. Um, so again, those ingredients are optional. Also, if you plan to not can this, you can adjust the um, vinegar. I just didn't want to adjust the vinegar because I am doing it um, as a hot water bath canning project and because this is a high acid um, recipe it can be hot water bath canned and does not need to be pressure canned. And I am using a tested recipe by Bernardin. Um, I did adjust the spices which is fine and I didn't add the raisins which again is fine um, but there is enough acid for it to be safely canned. So I'm going to start jarring up this chutney and I have the water, it is hot in the, in the hot water bath canner. So um, each one of these jars just came out of the hot water bath canner and they're still warm. But before you fill your, your jars, you always want to check to see if there's any cracks or chips in your jar because if you fill it and put it in the canner, that's when your, your jars could crack. So, and you also want to make sure the water is quite warm in your canner before you put hot jars into it. If it's cold and you put something hot, they could crack then too. So what I want to do first is I want to take my chopstick 
and I want to make sure there's no air bubbles in there. So once that's done, I want to look to see if I'm at the correct headspace. I want to fill these jars to a half inch headspace. So if you don't have a tool to measure the headspace, which I don't, you can just go by these rings here on the top of the jar. The bottom one is indicates a one inch headspace, the middle one is a half inch headspace, and the top one is a quarter inch headspace. So you can see that I'm at the head, the half inch headspace there, so that's good. I'm going to wipe the rim of my jar and make sure there's nothing on there because that could hinder your seal. And then you want to center a lid on there and add the screw band. And I just do it just slightly tighter than finger tight. And then you get your jar lifter and we're going to put this into the hot water bath canner with the water hot. When you've removed the air bubbles and you find that the headspace is a little bit too low, you just need to readjust it by adding a little bit more chutney and bringing it back up to the half inch, half inch headspace. Or if you have too much, just, just take it out. Once your jars are filled and put in the canner, make sure the water level is at least one inch to two inches above the tops of the filled lids. If you put the jars in the canner and you find that the water level is not above the lids, just pour some boiling water into the pot and make sure it's at least an inch or two inches above the lids. Now that the water level is above the jars, the filled jars, I have the lid on, I've turned the stove top up to maximum, and I'm going to wait for this water in the canner to come to a full rolling boil. At that time, I can set my timer for 10 minutes and let them process for 10 minutes. So the timer's gone off. And I want to shut the heat off. Oops, got a little steamy there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that settle down for a few minutes before I take the lid off because you don't want to steam burn. And then we're going to take the jars out of the canner. I'm just going to take the lid off and I'm going to tilt the lid this way so the steam doesn't burn my wrist. You want to bring them out slowly and you don't want to tilt them and put them onto your um, tea towel on your counter and again if there's any water on the lids don't tilt that off it'll just run off on its own or evaporate so you don't want to tilt the jar because it'll tilt the contents in there and it could um, hinder your seal so once you take your jars out of the canner and put them on the counter on your tea towel, you want to just leave them. You don't want to touch them and they should be left on the counter for anywhere between 12 and 24 hours. After that, check for the seal and make sure that lid, the divot is suctioned down and that will let you know that they have sealed. If they haven't sealed, make sure you put the jar into the refrigerator and that should last in the refrigerator for about four weeks. So once you have ensured that your jars have sealed and they've sat on the counter for between 12 and 24 hours, remove the ring from your jar and clean off the jar if there's any sediment from hard water and then label it and date it and put it on your pantry shelf and enjoy it. It should be pretty good for up to a couple of years anyway. Usually they say um, the quality is better if you've eaten it within the year, but I've had stuff for two and three years that I've eaten and it's been fine, as long as the jar is properly sealed. The reason for removing the ring when you're storing your, your canned goods on your pantry shelves is because if for some reason that jar releases its seal, um, the ring is holding the lid down and you may think that it's sealed, but it's really a false seal. Another thing too is if you have canned tomatoes or anything that can build up a gas, if that ring is holding that lid down and the seal goes and gases build up, your jars could explode or, or crack. Now, don't worry, they're not going to um, riddle you with shrapnel or anything like that, but you just don't want to mess on your pantry shelves. So it's always best to store your jars with no rings. And also don't stack your jars on the pantry shelf either. So you want to just keep them in a single layer with no rings and labeled. And periodically go check to see if, if everything is sealed. So there you go, there's mango chutney, and this is excellent as a condiment on meat, on homemade meat pies, 
uh, on a cheese tray. Now this recipe that I've made, um, it's a little bit, it's got a little bit of heat to it, but you don't have to put the hot pepper flakes. And when you first make this, the vinegar is quite strong, but as it sits, it's, um, it kind of goes away a little bit. So that's, it's a really nice, nice taste. So this is what the chutney looks like. This is two days after I've made it. And we've obviously been into this one. But this is the texture of it. It's actually really lovely. Thanks a lot for coming along with me in the kitchen while we make this mango chutney together. And thank you again to Lisa from Sutton's Days who hosts this great collaboration. And also thank you to Four Jars Canning Company for sponsoring this 2023 January event. And thank you for everybody who watches these videos and good luck with the draw.